<clears throat> All right, good, whatever day it is for you, time of day it is, morning, night, noon, midnight, I don't know. Um, so, one thing I want to talk about before we get going on this lesson is the due date, okay? So, um, right now, we're in week three, okay? And so, you have the first, second, and third of this week, and then you hit spring break, and then we have our Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday of the week after that first three days, after spring break. Okay, we don't have school this day, okay, because normally you always have the Monday after Easter off, okay? In reality, um, as of right now, we are coming back on this Thursday, so that would be the 16th. We are coming back. This could change, and then everything I'm about to say is just, like, valid at this, invalid. Um, but, so, if we are coming back on the 16th. This would then be your G1, G2 day, and this will be your G3, G4 day. Okay, and then I would see you guys. We're going to do all eight blocks on that Thursday if we come back on that Thursday. Now, please, please, please be prepared in the fact that that might not happen. Okay, whether I know Trump has already announced that the ban's supposed to go till April 30th. I don't know if whether Sisolak's going to announce that or not. Uh, Book will take all of that into consideration when he makes this decision, but he could potentially not make this decision until this Monday. And if he makes this decision on this Monday to not come to school on Thursday and continue online learning, we would no longer have everything be due Wednesday, okay? Week three would then be due on this Tuesday. And it's going to be a modified schedule on this Tuesday. And you do G1, G2, G3, and G4 all on Tuesday. So this is my advice to you. This decision could get made very, very late and you would still need to have all of your classes work done by Tuesday. So right now, during the first, second, and third, please, please, please be working ahead, okay? And getting ahead on things because I don't want you to come back from your nice spring, long spring break, and on Monday, everything gets switched and you have a bunch of stuff to do on Tuesday because all your classes are now due on Tuesday instead of Wednesday, all right? I don't know what will actually happen, um, and even if you do get ahead, then you get an extra day on Wednesday to relax before we come back to school on Thursday. Okay, so just be aware of that and understand that. All right, so let's get going on our last conic section. Okay, we are doing 7.4 uh, hyperbolas today. All right, so the definition of this should sound very, very familiar, okay? So it is the sum of all points such that, and that's an S slash T, that's math shorthand for such that, the difference, I'm going to underline that word, the difference of the distances from two fixed points is the same. All right, the reason this should sound extremely familiar is because it's the ellipses definition. The only change from the ellipse to the hyperbola is this word, okay? The ellipse would say the sum of the distances from the two fixed points is the same. In a hyperbola, it's going to be the difference. All right, so that's the only difference between these two. And it's the only difference in their equation as well, okay? Uh, in an ellipse, you have a plus sign. In a hyperbola, you're gonna have a minus sign. And that's it, everything else is the same, okay? So I hope this won't be as bad or as terrible as it might sound. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw, we have two sets of hyperbolas. Okay, and just kind of like you have two sets of ellipses, your vertical and your horizontal, we're going to have the same thing here. Okay, and so we will have asymptotes. If you don't know that a dashed line means an asymptote, uh, that's what I'm drawing right now. So there's going to be asymptotes, and how this shape is going to look is we're going to have this one, which will go left and right. Okay, and then you'll have this guy which will go up and down, okay? 
So we have two sets of hyperbolas. We got left and right, up and down, and things in their equation change as we go through. All right, so what I'd like you to do, just like we did last time, we're gonna just create a chart, okay? And the thing that we're gonna need in our chart is our equations. Okay, we will need a center. Okay, we will need vertices. We will need an asymptote. Leave a little bit of room under asymptote. Okay, you need a foci, and to find your foci, you need a C. All right, so we have equations, center, vertices, foci, C value. Go ahead, we got our two sets here. All right, so the equation, like I said, it's almost identical to the ellipse. The only difference is in the definition, which is the word difference. So we're gonna actually put a minus sign so that's what difference means. Minus. Okay, so it should look identical because it is. Okay, now here's the cool thing is right here the x is first. All right, and I'm always going to keep a under x and y over b. All right, um, now to flip to get to this guy, to get to the vertical one, the y is going to be first. So how to memorize this? because you're going to need to know that, all right, um, is just to, this one goes with our intuition, okay? For here, well, if x is first, I think x, I think left or right, okay? y is first here, so I think y, I think up or down, all right? And so that's how I would help you to memorize it. If you have a different way, go for it. Um, I loved some of your ways when you guys had to memorize the parabolas. Um, Nick Phillips and someone else had some great ones. I almost posted them. They were so funny and awesome. Um, so just come up with funny ways to help you memorize that, okay? All right. The center doesn't change really at all, okay? The weird thing is, just like everything else, the center's not actually on the equation, the, you know, the, um, the shape, right? In a circle, your center is inside the circle. It's not on the circle. Same with the ellipse, right? Okay, the parabola is the weird one because the center is the vertex, right? And the vertex is on it, so that's why a parabola is weird. But in a hyperbola, same thing as the other, okay, the center is actually where the asymptotes cross. All right, that is where our center is. So that is our center. Okay, and just like everything else, it is H comma K. All right, it is just H comma K. All right, and the vertices are a little bit different. Um, they're not too crazy, but the vertices are just like the vertex of your parabola. These kind of look parabola-y looking, okay? Um, so it's this little point here. So if we're thinking right now, this distance from here to here is a horizontal distance, which letter in our equation minus the center, okay, represents a horizontal distance. Well, that would be A, right? So that distance is A, and this distance is Okay, so to get my two vertices, I'm going to take h, add and subtract a to it, and keep it at the same y value of k. All right, and then over here, those are my vertices. I'm going to go ahead and put this so you guys can see it. Those are your vertices. All right, and so from here, we're thinking, okay, here's my center, and I want to go up, and I want to go down from my center. So looking which value in my equation means up or down, except for the values that are talking about the center, well, that would lead, leave me to B. So this is going to be my B value. So when I'm going to find my vertices, my left or right staying the same, my center is staying the same. But I need to take the K value and add and subtract B to it to get my two vertices. All right, the asymptote is really, really weird. And I'm going to actually show you the proof for where this comes from, okay? Uh, the key thing, if you're ever struggling, is to just solve for y, okay? So an asymptote is just an equation of a line, all right? And so the equation of the line that you guys know so, so well is y equals mx plus b. And I'm just going to write that on a separate sheet of paper, okay? So you guys know the line y equals mx plus b extremely, extremely well. All right, so we want to essentially get it to that form. We won't get it quite to that form. We're going to have two different ones, okay? Um, and so the one you will always use is y equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h plus k, all right? And that is actually going to be the same for both of the equations, 
Okay, and if you notice on our asymptotes here, right, these dashed lines, all right, there's two and they look identical, all right? Okay, one should be positive sloping and the other one should be negative sloping, all right? So that's why we have this plus and minus thing. But I'm actually gonna show you where this comes from off the equation. So I'm gonna take this equation right here, all right? And so we have our x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals one. If I take this one over here, it'd get identical, okay? It'd essentially be the same thing. Um, so I wanna solve for y, right? So I can get it into this y equals mx plus b form. So I'm gonna add that over, x minus h squared over a squared equals y minus k squared over b squared plus one, right? I still wanna get y by itself. So the reason why I added it over is so it became positive and I no longer had to deal with a negative. So I'm gonna move the uh, one over. Oops, sorry, that should be minus one. Equals y minus k over b squared. Okay, I do wanna go ahead and get y by itself still. So I'm gonna multiply by the b squared, get rid of that. Remember that's gonna to go to this whole big mess. So I'm left with b squared times x minus h squared over a squared minus just a b squared. And we're left with y minus k squared. All right, so the next thing to get y by itself is to go ahead and square root it. And when you square root something, you need to add a plus or minus. Okay, key thing right here, I can't really do much with the square root, even though everything's squared in it, because I have addition and subtraction. Okay, so this is the little calculus part, but I want you to just start to be aware of this uh, for, for those of you moving on, uh, just because it's such a key concept. Okay, and so we're gonna take the limit as x approaches infinity. Okay, of this big mess. Oops, sorry, I forgot to include the b squared. So we're taking that, the limit of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna write that out here. So we're just gonna think about it logically right now, that's all. Okay, we're not gonna make you go through the entire thing. So essentially what we're saying is we're saying this little thing right here is gonna become infinity. That's what we wanna say. So talking about this, if this is infinity, if I multiply a bunch of stuff by infinity, I'm really at infinity, right? And if I divide by some number, I'm still going to be at infinity, okay? And then when you're at infinity, if you subtract something, say you're at infinity and that b is three, so you subtract nine. Does that really affect infinity? Think about if you had $600 trillion and you lost nine of those dollars, would you be upset? Probably not because you still have a lot of money, right? Okay, and so that's what this concept is, is as the limit goes to infinity, I don't really care about this constant out here anymore because it doesn't affect it, all right? And so these are asymptotes. So we're thinking about as the graph is approaching this asymptote, as it's going out to infinity, right? Because it's as it goes out to infinity, it approaches that asymptote. I don't really, really care about that minus b squared. It's not gonna affect the value essentially, okay? And so what we'd be left with is now we're left with plus or minus the square root of b squared times x minus h squared over a squared equals y minus k. All right, and since I have no more addition and subtraction, I can go ahead and cancel out all my squares, and this is what I am left with. Now we still need to solve for y, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my k value over and this should look really, really familiar because guess what? That is our equation for our asymptote, all right? And so the key thing I want you to really take into this is it's not quite in y equals mx plus b for me yet, but we can get it there, all right? And the way we're gonna get it there is to distribute, all right? So I get plus or minus b over ax minus bh over a plus k. All right, and so this is our mx plus b form. So if you want to take this down in your chart, okay, go for it. There's your slope. It's always b over a, and this is your y-intercept is this big mess. Now, when you're going to graph that, you don't really want to know the y-intercept because I don't care about the y-intercept. What I care about is where are my asymptotes meeting because that's my center, right? And you should notice right here, oh, well, look right here. My center is in my equation, right? So your asymptotes where I would always graph from is their center, and that's a point. You have one point, and then you're gonna use your slope, you're gonna do your rise over your run to get the next one. And I really, really, this is the best part about associating B with Y and A with X. Well, Y is up and down. 
and guess what's on top? Your rise, your Y value, your up and down rise. And guess what's on bottom? Your run, your left or right. So every single time I want you to memorize your slope is rise over run and you start at your center. That's what your asymptote is. And your rise is going to be the stuff under the Y and your run is going to be the stuff under the X. Okay? Um, so if you want to go ahead and also copy down what I just had, it's that Y equals plus or minus B over AX minus BH over A plus K. All right, so that is going to be the more like when you're going to straight plug it in for the actual uh, slope-intercept form of the asymptote, that would be it. All right, the foci. Okay, let's see a color I haven't used. Here we go. So we're coming back up here, and we're at the foci. And so our foci, remember, are these guys right here. Okay, those are your foci. Okay, the little the dot, that fixed point inside the shape. All right, and so how we say this for this guy is this distance right here is C, okay? And so we need to go left or right C, or over here, that distance is C. So on that one, you need to go up or down, okay? So we're gonna take H plus or minus C. We're gonna keep the Y value the same on the left and right. And over here, we're gonna have H will stay the same, but we're gonna change the K value because we're gonna add and subtract C to it. Okay, now the proof for actually finding the C value is way more complicated than it was for the ellipse. If you want to go on uh, to, uh, to Khan Academy, type in proof for uh, foci of hyperbola. Uh, there's a 14 minute video that shows you this proof. It's not bad. It's just using distance formula. Um, but I'm just going to give it to you guys because I think most of you would just trust me that that's what it is. Okay, and so the one thing I want you to kind of click in your brain here is remember when it was an ellipse and we had a plus sign here and we had a plus sign in the equation when we found c it was a minus sign okay and so everything's just flipped right because the definition essentially is just flipped and so now it's a minus sign here so now when i'm trying to find the foci it will become a plus sign all right so that is our first video